Uh, I want to introduce you the speakers. Instead of, we have a change today. Instead of Emil Eulen Nielsen, probably if you had, could attend the first webinar we had this year to introduce the nano cuvette system, uh, you, you, you already know it. But uh, today we are honored to have a presentation by Christopher Lusher, uh, CEO uh, in Copenhagen Nano System, and uh, uh, from Sangita Katrick, research scientist, while uh, Vian Baker Shaker is the moderator. I don't want to lose any uh, additional time, and uh, I will leave uh, um, the presentation in your hands, Christopher and Sangita, so you can introduce yourself and start uh, the presentation. Thank you. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you so much, Simona, for the nice um, introduction. Welcome everyone to this webinar uh, hosted by Avenger, delivered by BWR and presented by CPH Nano. Uh, we are here to uh, talk about the Nanoquid S, uh, which you can use to achieve easy, fast and reliable particle size analysis. Introducing myself, I'm Singita Kadri and I'm working as a research scientist in Copenhagen Nano System. And my name is uh, Christopher uh, Lusher, and I am the interim CEO here at Copenhagen Nanosystems. I have the privilege of spending the afternoon with you guys talking through the invention that I helped co-create uh, some years back. This is the overall outline of uh, today's uh, presentation. First of all, uh, my um, colleague Christopher will uh, introduce the company, then we will walk you through the short introduction about the absorption spectroscopy, then we will show you some of the amazing instruments of a BWR uh, collection, and we will introduce you uh, to the main topic, which is the particle size analysis, and introduce our product NanoQubit S and SpectroWorks with sum up with some of the sum up with some of our take-home messages. So what we'll be walking through today is the uh, method of using the NanoQuvet S inside a UV uh, this uh, photospectrometer to achieve inexpensive, uh, inexpensive precise concentration measurement and accurate size determination. This method uh, can replace specialized costly uh, equipment like uh, DLS and AFM, PSS, NanoSide and others. So if you compare uh, this uh, method, then you could purchase one nanocuvette a day for 12 years to a comparable equipment of high-end quality. So let's go on to uh, poll question number one. Do you have a cuvette-based UV-VIS spectrophotometer in your lab? Good. Um, so we can see that uh, the majority of the participants today do actually have a size distribution mechanism, which proves that it is a utilized method. So let's go on to the company. So the company is a spin-off company from the Danish Technical University. It was formed back in 2015, uh, and we specialize in upgrading UEVIS uh, spectrophotometers using a combination of a digital platform with a consumable insert that we call nanocuvettes. Uh, which effectively uh, modernizes existing equipment. Next slide. Uh, the products today are utilized in a cross range of different industries, ranging from education to research and development, and also in production in uh, core industries like uh, biotech, life science, uh, etc. So the range of products that we provide are the consumables, which are the inserts that we call nanocuvettes. It comes in two different formats, one being the nanocuvette one, which is a refractive index measurement. Uh, the other one is nanocuvette S, which measure the size distribution, and both of them will also determine the concentration at the same time. The data is then streamed to SpectraWorks, which is our cloud-based uh, platform for handling and processing and analyzing all of your spectral data. This platform will also generate a report and making your lab uh, flow easier, faster, and more accessible. So as um, my colleague Christopher mentioned, we are here to upgrade the spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometer is one of the most commonly used instrument in any lab, either it is high school or university. 
A spectrophotometry is one of the most widely used analytical tool. It is used to measure the concentration of the analyte in the solution. It can be DNA, RNA, proteins, or enzymes. Here you can see in the left the working mechanism of a spectrophotometer where you have the light source, you have the monochromator, which changes the uh, polychromatic light to the monochromatic light. You have the sample holder where you put the qubits with the sample and you have the detector for the output. So the the uh, classical spectrophotometer is used uh, for mainly uh, absorption spectroscopy, and it is based on beard lambert's law. beard lambert's law relates the attenuation of the light to the properties of the material through which the light is traveling. So you can say the attenuance or absorption or, or optical density, it depends on the concentration of the analyte and the fixed wavelength you measured in. So if you double the concentration, you double the attenuance. So here is the VWR collection lineup. We have a V1200, UV1600 PC, 3100 PC, 6300 PC, M4, P4, and PV4. And with us now, we have the VWR 6300 instrument. They all have the fixed beam height of 15 millimeter, and they uh, they accept all um, uh, industry inst standard qubits. And our qubits, uh, both NAND qubit 1 and NAND qubit S, are compatible with all of these instruments. So here we come uh, with uh, the poll question two. Do you have particle size analysis equipment in your lab? We'll be happy to hear all of your answers. Good. So thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the answer. And we can see that a majority of you don't have the particle size analysis equipment in, uh, in your lab. Um, however, it uh, is completely understandable. It is one of the more expensive instruments that you can find in the market. Uh, now here we come with the particle size analysis. It is uh, the technical procedure to measure the list of values or a mathematical function that defines the relative amounts of particles dispersed include sorted according to their size. Particle size is one of the most important parameters that uh, influence the dissolution, absorption, stability, physical, chemical, and pharmacokinetic properties of particles. So it is a widely calculated uh, parameter in almost all type of research, including biology, chemistry, um, pharmaceutical industry, food industry, and many more. Uh, in market, we have the particle size analyzer, which are used to measure the particle size of the particles, different particles. They are based on different technology. First, one of them is Brownian motion, and this Brownian motion technology is used in dynamic light scattering, which is one of the dominant instrument of the market. Uh, there is a high definition image processing technique, which a lot of uh, imaging uh, technology like uh, scanning electron microscopy or transmission electron microscopy uh, are used. Then we have Rayleigh and Me scattering, where our system is based on. By using the ray, by using the combination of both Rayleigh and Me scattering, we can measure uh, the particle size of low uh, size and of higher size as well. So if you if you see at the existing uh, particle size analysis method, we have two of uh, two of them: fractioning methods and non-fractioning methods. In fractioning methods, you have sieving, separation in liquids, separation in gases, but these are for large, extremely large particles. However, if you see in non-fractioning methods, the first one is macroscopic method. So this is uh, also one of the expensive method where the instruments like scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, chirotem, chirosem uh, are used. And it analyzes the single particles um, uh, dispersed in the liquid or like uh, uh, and we have another light diffraction and scattering. Light diffraction, as I have already mentioned, it is the based. Uh, it is um, based on uh, for the uh, di dynamic light scattering, and then uh, the static light scattering method, which is our system based on. They measure the. Uh, they analyze the set of the particles dispersed in the liquid. We have ultrasound methods and X-ray diffraction analysis as well. Good. So let's go into poll question number three. Can your instrument measure both the size and concentration at the same? 
So from the results, we see that over 90% of the participants uh, does not have the capabilities of measuring both at the same time. And this is where the NanoCuvette S comes in. So what we see here is our uh, uh, NanoCuvette S. It comes in a uh, 10 a unit box. Inside the box, you will see we have uh, 10 uh, nano cuvettes, and if we take one out and place it over here, you see this is roughly the, the form factor, so it fits within a standard cuvette, and inside of that there is an optical filter that enables the cuvette and the UEVS instrument to perform the size distribution. Now I'm opening up the VWR UV3 6300PC, uh, and we see here that it fits perfectly in as a standard. So let's switch to the screen. Yeah. So what we are doing now is that we are taking the standard uh, approach to uh, UV-Vis uh, photospectrometry, where we pass the light through a cuvette. Now we have added a filter. This filter modulates how the light interacts with the liquid occupying the cuvette and thereby we, uh, we can extract additional information. On each cuvette, there is an engraved ID that is uniquely identified by each individual cuvette and the filter along with it. So we also calibrate the system. This enables for easy, fast measurements of particle size and concentration at the same time in a label-free measurement ranging from 10 nanometers to 10 micrometers. So the way this method works is that we have two complex uh, methods of scattering. One is the uh, Rayleigh scattering that works well with determining how small particle interacts with light. Then for larger particles, we have what is known as MIGI scattering, which uh, uh, covers how light interacts with larger particles. The nanocuvides combines these two methods in our mathematical model and therefore enabling a broad range of dynamic measurements from small to large particles. The way we actually measure, you see that on the right side of the screen now, is that the photonic crystal or the filter we have put in creates these hills and valleys, which shift along the wavelength depending on the liquid occupying the cuvette, and thereby we can determine uh, added attributes to the liquid. So the benefits from this is that we have a small volume, so you need uh, a reduced volume for your analysis. It is an easy and fast uh, uh, system that can measure direct label-free concentration and size distribution with extreme low concentration going down to 0.03% uh, particle concentration. Uh, it replaces uh, expensive specialized equipment and enabling your current spectrophotometers uh, to operate in this dual domain. And it also includes the standard measurements that you get from a normal cuvette. So here we come with our fourth poll question. Which sample do you usually work with for particle size analysis? So we can see that a lot of you work with plastic uh, liposomes. Some of you work with it, yeast and E. coli. There are also some who use that, but there are a lot of others who uh, use um, samples except these. Of course, there are a lot of samples that you use uh, in your daily research life. Uh, so here, we, as Christopher mentioned, the benefits of the Nanocubit S, that it can do the size and concentration, precise size and concentration analysis at a time using just the consumable that is our NanCubit S and the online software SpectreWorks. This uh, is validated by um, the GLP uh, certified uh, industry of uh, Denmark Particle Analytic. They have done the measurements of uh, the polystyrene, which is the industry standard reference system uh, from 100 nanometer to 300 nanometers, and they have validated it. So here you can do uh, now, you get just by using the NanoCubit and the online software, free online software, you can do the particle size analysis of antibody, lipid, virus, and bacteria. 
However, uh, as we go high in the particle size, we saw better results. So you can uh, go, do your measurements with cells and with the particles below the 100 nanometers as well. So as I have already mentioned that the validation was done by the industry of Denmark particle analytics. They have used the polystyrene as a reference sample. Uh, they have used dynamic light scattering, which is uh, one of the you know, dominant uh, dominant uh, um, equipment for particle analysis in the market as a reference and they have uh, done the measurement with six different polystyrene samples and they have replicated it in their house. So uh, you can see some data uh, here uh, which is provided by the particle analytics after uh, doing uh, the uh, measurements. Uh, in the left side, you will see the graph of the polystyrene latex mix mean size measurement, uh, where the uh, black dotted line is the theoretical mean size of uh, the polystyrene provided by Sigma. Red is uh, the measurement done with the spectrophotometer, BWR spectrophotometer 6300 PC using uh, the nanoquid S and our online software SpectroWorks. And blue is the measurements uh, data done by the dynamic light scattering. So from this graph, it is pretty clear that uh, the nanoquid yes with um, uh, SpectroWix uh, using spectrophotometer, just by using the spectrophotometer, can outperform uh, the expensive instrument uh, like DLS. You can see that as you go higher in the particle sizes, the DLS performance go worse. Can I just add? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the reason why the uh, nanoquid S outperforms uh, a standard DLS measurement is that the nanocuvert S combines both the relay and the MEI scattering and that duality in the model allows us to capture a much broader range that is simply not uh, able to do in a traditional DLS measurement. Yes, so further uh, we have there is some more statistics done by measuring the error and the reproducibility. If you see the error graph, then you see that the nanoquid S mean particle size has less error, error which is like uh, below 30%. It is just one outlier that is 31. Otherwise, the uh, error uh, is extending up to 18%. But however, if you go higher in the uh, size, uh, you have less error percentage for the measurements done by our technology with a VWR instrument. However, if you see in contrast the uh, dynamic light scattering measurements, uh, if you go higher in the particle size, it, the performance is um, going lower and the error is reaching up to 50%. Uh, if you look on the right side, the reproducibility rate, it is pretty stable for uh, the size from uh, 400, 300 nanometer to 1100. Uh, however, uh, our uh, reproducibility rate is above 90% um, for most of it, except one outlier for 100 nanometers. But it's the similar trend for a DLS. If you go higher in the concentrate, uh, higher in the particle size, the performance is um, getting worse, and the reproducibility is also going down. So in the same time, uh, particle analytics, uh, the partner who have done the validation of our nanqubit S and um, with the VWR instrument has done the concentration measurement where uh, you can see the uh, uh, see on the left graph the black dotted line is the theoretical particle concentration provided by the sigma and the red is the nanqubit S concentration measurement. You can see in the table on the right uh, the um, error for uh, the concentration measurement is pretty low and uh, it's just for 300 nanometer which is like very very less concentration is there and the error is a little bit high which could be due to the limit of detection of our technology the concentration is very low and uh, that is that could be the reason like the error is a little bit high but if you see and uh, the further graph error and reprodu reproducibility rate the error is pretty low below 20 percent for uh, the size except one outlier and the reproducibility rate is above 90 percent for almost all measurements so uh, here is uh, just uh, the screenshot of the certificate of analysis done by uh, the uh, particle analytics by QC chemist Wingbo Wang uh, and uh, the measurements of uh, measurements done by DLS. 
for 100 nanometers for small nanoparticle or small particles as i have mentioned before dls is pretty good like the size is 118 and for 460 nanometer it's 417 and for but however it's the same if you go higher in the size the performance of dls degrades pretty much but uh, you can also see uh, the screenshot of uh, the uh, screenshot of the measurements done um, in size distribution which is done by using this nanofluid s and spectra works in the spectrophotometer uh, the performance is pretty well the uh, size for 100 nanometers it is 150 nanometer there and the concentration for 0.00, .00 002 it's 0 0.009 which is also pretty fine and then it's it shows the similar trend for all other particles so let's go to poll question number five do you use any cloud-based software for your lab, lab analysis or do you use any programming language like python or matlab to interpret and analyze your data okay good so uh, 75% uh, of you uh, mentioned that you do not use a cloud-based software and you do not use a programming language to interpret your data. What we will be demonstrating now is our digital platform called SpectralWorks that enables a digital handling of your spectral data uh, and to effectivize and standardize your UVVIS lab work. So what we'll be uh, opening now is uh, SpectralWorks.com uh, where you uh, can sign uh, up or sign in, uh, and then you can access your, your profile. So here, uh, St. Kitsa will just log in. Given that it is a cloud platform, it means that you do not need any software to be downloaded onto your device. You simply need to access it through any web browser. And then it will load up into your browser and access the platform. So what we're doing now is that uh, we have a platform that initially will tell you which lab, uh, workflow that you will be looking at. So you will start out by uh, choosing your, uh, your workflow. So here we have to the left basic cuvettes, which is the standard uh, UVS uh, lab flow. Uh, in the middle, we have nano cuvette one, uh, which will add the refractive index measurement and micro volume uh, detection. And then we have nanocuvet S that will add the size distribution with the uh, concentration at the same time. So when we enter into uh, one of these uh, workflows, we will have to take uh, one of the devices. So we will first go in and type in a box code, select the cuvette, um, and from where uh, we can then choose the material surrounding the product. So first we'll take the water or the fluid suspension, which in this case will be water. Uh, and we will also highlight the sources of where this model data comes from. So if you need to read up on the source, we, you can do that. So when you have chosen the fluid uh, material, you can choose the particle material. And here we have uh, different uh, elements. So if we go into the organic one, and then we can measure uh, polystyrene, and then uh, figure out the source for the refractive index. Yeah. So then we go into the workflow. So uh, if I can just get the camera over here. So what we are seeing now uh, here is that in the uh, cuvette, there is a side where the filter is facing towards the light beam, away from the light beam, or the light, light beam not passing through. This we uh, denominate by different sides of the cuvette. So side number A, uh, Vian, can I get uh, uh, the screen? Good, so side number A is going through the cuvette without passing through the filter. So here we can measure on the instrument take the spectral data, drag and drop it into the workflow, and then it will be uh, uploaded, and then we can calculate on it. And then we repeat the measurement through the crystal in order to measure the quality of the crystal and calibrate to the calibration file that we have created at the production 
and thereby adjusting for the cuvette specific uh, features. And then we repeat, uh, repeat the measurement uh, with the filter facing away from the light. Then the cloud will take this reference data and compare it to the model, and then it will give you a number uh, of quality for the crystal, and thereby you can actually reuse the crystal uh, because you will have a direct measurement on how good the crystal is, and therefore how reliable your output data will be subsequently a measurement. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes to calculate finish here so we can show you where the numbers are. Um, so, uh, yeah, so one thing we can do now while it's uh, loading the data is that uh, when we, uh, yeah, so you, what you see here is that um, we have a fit quality of 92%, which effectively means that we can reproduce both the model and the quality of the crystal in our cloud solution with a high fidelity, so therefore the rest of the workflow will have an expected high fidelity output. So when we design an experiment, we can go in and then we can uh, uh, add in the sample and then we repeat the drag and drop process, follow the workflow again. And here we are measuring on a 460 nanometer uh, latex bead or polystyrene at a concentration of 0.004%. Uh, and then by having this workflow fully digitalized with instructions on how to uh, work through it, we can ensure the highest likelihood of executing a good workflow. At the end of the workflow, um, we will also have uh, the different uh, uh, data models. So what we're doing now, like we did with the quality of the crystal, we will also do it for the quality of the result. So initially we do a, a, a calibration of the system, then we do a calibration of the measurement. And what we see here is that we were trying to measure 460 nanometers, and we obtained a measurement of 478 nanometers. We were supposed to get uh, 0.004, and we achieved 0 0.0038, uh, and we created a fidelity index of 91%. This data can then be exported in a standardized format, uh, so it can be uh, shared, reported, uh, or aggregated, uh, depending on uh, uh, what the intended use of it is, and from which we can then um, give the final report. Mm -hmm. So when we start up uh, a project, uh, you can pre-select uh, how to uh, yeah, just. So the the results that are seen here in the final report. Uh, under the uh, yeah the result uh, tabulates, all of these elements are pre-selected when you configure your, your report. So what you see here is the final report that is auto-generated. There will be the refractive index. There will be the fit quality for the reference and the crystal. There will be your selected measurements that you're trying to quantify, um, and then there will be the raw data in the plots. Over to the left we have the sample attributes. So here you can actually type in uh, the needed uh, or the required information for your sample. And if, uh, and if you wanted to add some notes, you can do that. The data here can be exported either as a image or as a CSV file and be used in uh, other lab work, or it can be used uh, directly integrated into a digital API flow. So let's go back to where we configure our, uh, our workflow. So if we go into a, our project overview, it will go back to the main menu. If I go into new project, then you see here all of the results that we can uh, choose to make. So first we will make sure to give it a unique name so we can identify what we're working on. Then we can go through the uh, results list to the left and see what do we like to add to our experiment. And what you see uh, on 
uh, in the middle of it uh, are which types of cuvettes uh, that supports that measurement. So when we go into the uh, particle concentration, you can see that that's only supported by the nano cuvette S. Whereas if we go down to uh, the uh, attenuation uh, measurement, that is supported by nano cuvette 1, nano cuvette S, and basic cuvettes, meaning any standard cuvettes. And then it's simply adding uh, the different elements you want to add to your report and press create. And then you go back to the workflow that we just showed before. Good. And uh, spectreworks.com uh, is where you will find uh, the platform. You can log in, uh, you can create a profile and log in today and use it for your existing UVVIS uh, instrument workflow. Uh, and you can also add um, the nano cuvettes if you want to do specialized equipment. So, in conclusion, what we have demonstrated today is a low cost alternative to uh, DLS measurements. It is a reliable, uh, accurate uh, determination of both size uh, and distribution, uh, size and concentration, sorry. It works with a existing UVV uh, this infrastructure, like the photospectrometer standing in front of me here from the VWR selection line. Uh, you are, it is enabled by a cloud-based system that works without any download of software with any licenses. So you just need a web browser so you can operate the workflow from a tablet or, a, uh, or working in your office while you have the data performed down in the lab. Uh, it works with standard cuvette formats, so any existing infrastructure you have can be upgraded. Uh, and it, it, having the digital workflow where we map out all the steps ensures a high quality and repeatability of the measurements, where we can save time, reduce the need for specialist knowledge, uh, and therefore also have a, a better workflow. So the benefits of uh, of collaborating with VWR is that for uh, users like yourself, you can now get these uh, nano cuvettes uh, and upgrade your existing UVVIS instrument through your traditional channels. Um, you can have it supported uh, with uh, all of the instruments from VWR, uh, and we can have um, you know uh, all of these um, procurement processes are already set in motion. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have all the documentation for all of our systems that can be uh, shared through VWR. And in that way, you can access uh, our knowledge space on knowledge.cgates.com, uh, uh, where you get uh, some descriptions on uh, applications, uh, use cases, uh, publications, etc. So we can make sure to bring your UVVIS instrument uh, to the forefront of specialized equipment. And of course, they ship across all of Europe uh, and uh, it fits with your existing laboratory routines. So here uh, you have our uh, technology Nanicubit S and the online platform SpectreWorks, where you can use this uh, to measure the size, distribution and concentration by just using the most uh, available instrument that is a spectrophotometer. Furthermore, it is very, um, it is uh, like the normal conventional uh, qubit, so it is very easy to work with it. You you just need to know A, B, D side. You can find all the information in our website. Uh, if you look on then with S uh, SpectreWorks, you will get all information how to use on it, and we are always available to answer your questions. It is. It gives very accurate results, and it has a traceability and much more benefits with it. Uh, thank you so much for your attention, and we'll be happy to answer your question. Yes, we have a few questions. I will just read the first question up. The first question is: yeah. Oh, just one more question. What is the shelf life of the filter? 
So we have a, uh, a recommended shelf life of three years uh, on the uh, nano cubettes. Uh, yes, but you also, if you are reusing the cubettes, then um, you also need to be careful, like you wash it properly and dry it. So if you just leave the liquid in the cubettes uh, for two, three days, then you can lose it. So it also depends like how you uh, clean it and take care of it. If you want to want to use it for multiple use. And, and the key element to that is the unique traceability and calibration profile created from production means that we will give uh, you a direct feedback on the quality of the crystal before performing your measurement. So you know before you conduct your entire essay whether or not that cuvette is functioning or not. Great, and we will continue to next question. Is it possible to use this technique if I do not know the refractive index of the measured material or a heterogeneous material. Also, does the technique work with highly poorly dispersed samples? Uh, so right now the, the system is only validated for uh, singular concentrations. Um, we have not measured on uh, dirty conditions, meaning uh, we have not measured on seawater with algae or seawater or uh, stream water with uh, micro and nanoplastics. Uh, that will be uh, some of the investigations that we will be looking into in the future. Um, we have, given that we both measure uh, me scattering and Rayleigh scattering, we have an expectation of performing what is known as a multimodal uh, size distribution, uh, and therefore we should be able to uh, detect uh, a mixture of compounds. Um, in regards to the uh, refractive index, um, so you in, in the model you you need to load uh, the model for your particles, um, and if you don't know what your particles are, it's going to be very difficult to create the model. Uh, so I I'm not sure that without knowing what the particles are, we can actually do the mathematical model. Next question. Is the method valid for latex particles covalently coupled to antibodies? Um, yes. So uh, you can say the, the validation method is only on latex beads, but the principles are the same. Um, because we are measuring scattering, we are measuring how the physical size of the particles interact with the light. Uh, and therefore, we measure a more true size distribution compared to DLS. So a DLS uh, will measure the change in speed of the particles, and therefore it will be more reflective of the hydrodynamic radius, which would not capture antibodies uh, uh, being primed onto the surface. So, so yes, I would expect us to be able to detect uh, the size distributions with antibodies uh, on the surface. Thank you. Next question, what is the particle size can be, it can be measured with? So we have tested from 10 nanometers up to uh, 3,000 nanometers. We have tested until 3,000 nanometers, yeah. but um, as you see in the results, as you go higher in the particle size, we get the better results. So we expect that um, it, it gets better results uh, as you go high and we expect to measure until 10,000 uh, nanometers, which is 10K, 10 micrometer. Thank you. And next question. Is it possible to use this technique if I do not know the, okay, sorry, I did already. We already answered it, but I think it's great to answer yeah. again. Can it work with any UV lists? Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of people are asking that. Yeah, so uh, of course uh, your light source in your instrument will influence uh, what you can probe and your detector will also give you some uh, limitations on your resolution. But in essence what the method does is that it couples the light into the photonic crystal and thereby we probe how the liquid interacts with the surface of the crystal 
uh, which means that we can shift the measurement into most ranges of a UVVIS instrument. We have identified, uh, to my knowledge, no standardized UVVIS instruments that we cannot perform the measurements on unless they change the footprint of the cuvette. So there are some uh, instruments that use circular cuvettes, predominantly for water essaying. There are some uh, that uh, has a weird uh, or an odd placement of the beam. Uh, so we need to ensure that the beam height fits with the crystal. Um, but outside of that, we, we work with most instruments we have come across. Great, thank you. Next question. Has the method an upper limit? There, is there any like concentrations too high for the measurement? Uh, yes, I have tried a couple uh, of them, and uh, if you go like above um, 0.1% of uh, the concentration, then it is uh, saturating and you don't get the reliable result. Okay. And it also depends on the mm, different particle sizes. So if you go for a higher size, then you need a lower concentration, and if you and go lower size, then you need higher concentration. So it also depends on different sizes and different samples. So, so in the end, it's because it's how the scattered light mm -hmm. propagates through the cuvette. So for the large particles, you will have more of a masking effect. So therefore, it's more sensitive to high concentrations compared to smaller particles. But it will be a case-specific uh, situation. So we, therefore, we recommend uh, whenever you do a size distribution measurement by starting out by doing a dilution series so you can actually detect where you oversaturate your measurements. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Can dry powders for quality control be measured using this system? Dry powder? So it's... Um, So from the format we have now uh, out of the box, you need a liquid suspension or a gas suspension. So effectively, you need a way for the powder to be suspended uh, in the volume. So if you have standard nanoparticles, uh, then they will simply not float around and you won't be able to uh, detect it. Uh, there could be methods of doing it, but it's not something we have uh, tried out and it's not something that we are investigating currently. Uh, there are methods of depositing uh, uh, small particles onto the crystal, but that's a really specialized application that we do not support currently. Thank you. Next question. Um, I will just read the question. I'm not 100% sure I understand the question, but maybe you do. There is not necessary that the cuvette be a self-masking black cuvette. Is it made for quartz? Yeah. So, um, so the cuvettes we supply are all made in a plastic cuvettes format. Um, so we do not uh, currently have any quartz-based cuvettes in our production line. Um, and so therefore, that is not something we offer currently. Uh, we do have some conversations with some quartz uh, cuvette suppliers, uh, but it's not something we have in production. Okay, we have a lot of questions and yeah, we have some time left, so it's good. Next question. What is the size range of cells for cell counts? Um, so cells, algae uh, and microalgae are typically in this, like in a very small elements is around bacteria, so 5,000 mm -hmm. and up. Uh, so they normally go all the way up to yeah 10 uh, and some of them can also be odd shaped so uh, and, and uh, like uh, elongated and here you can see some that have will have a characteristic uh, length of uh, 30 micrometers okay next question is it possible to measure gas nanobubbles in aqueous solution uh, so measuring cavities in theory yes uh, it's not something we have done um, um, and uh, the, the question here becomes if you're actually measuring uh, the gas inside of the uh, of the cavity or if you're measuring the cavity itself um, so i think that would 
be required to do some additional uh, analysis work in order to get out a concentration on it uh, because uh, li gases are compressible. Uh, so, so it also depends that there are, there are some variables that are not captured directly in a UV-vis instrument that needs to be accounted for. Next question. Can we count virus and bacteria? So if we uh, go back to the validation uh, size uh, slides. Um, so here, so the way that uh, the system is validated right now is that it's validated up to 3000 uh, nanometers and down to 100 uh, nanometers. And that means we can both cover viruses, uh, liposomes, and some smaller bacteria, not the larger bacteria. And we can go all the way down to most of the antibodies as well. So, and given that we expect to be able to do multimodal, this also means that you should be able to measure virus and bacteria in the same uh, biological uh, sample. Great, thank you. Next question how does this oh, sorry how does the system perform for materials of diverse particle shape and size which is the case of most real life material yeah so that's a really good question um so so when you have different shape and size you have different uh, size um so how do you do size analysis? You take the average of the particles that are dispersed on the liquid. So of course you can do it. Mm -hmm. So if they scatter yeah. differently, but it takes the average at the yeah. end. And we are both doing relay and me scattering. I think that is w which is beneficial here. And with together with it, of course uh, you can do it. So you don't you don't have the particles of the same size here. If you see the polystyrene as well in 100 nanometers, it could be some like with small size, maybe 80, and some which could be like 150. So the product the sigma delivered, it is also an average. So of course they scatter differently, but we have this both relay and me scattering. I think we, of course we can do it. Yeah. So so I, I think the main thing here is that the orientation of your uh, non-circular mm -hmm. or spherical uh, uh, particle, uh, on average, they will be randomly oriented. So when you send light through it, you will measure an average. So you won't get a shape index out, but you will get an average size. Um, you could, in theory, try and orient them and you know scan them in different directions, but there you would need to prime the surface mm -hmm. of the of the photonic crystal. Uh, Safe matters a lot for uh, microscopy techniques like uh, SEM and CHEM. They yeah. they need to be circular and uh, of uh, almost like homogeneous, like yeah. clone type. So, but here uh, we can do it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Next question: Do you feel reliability for sizes uh, under 100 nanometer, mean mean diameter and concentration, can be improved, or is this limited to the limit of the technique. The, te the limit of the technique here. It's it's like we are using the spectrophotometer and optics matters a lot here. Mm -hmm. So if you have the instrument like BWR 6300, um, it performs very well. It it gives like almost like a 100% precise concentration and size. But if you go uh, to uh, the little bit lower. Um, Quality. quality instrument then the optics uh, can play some role there and then you can get you will get the significant data because i have tried uh, the measurements on uh, the instrument like bwr 6300 which performs amazing it has amazing optics and something like which they also have like uh, the lower quality instrument it has the it gives the significant result which is sensitive enough and uh, which can be which is comparable to dls but uh, if you want to have a really great, like, precise result, then uh, the optics, uh, the instrument with the better optics works. Good. So, so you, you you can put it this way: there are uh, uh, the quality of the crystal, there's the quality of the optics, and then there's the quality of the model. Mm -hmm. So, what we do in our model work is that we continuously push the boundaries of that, and therefore we continuously improve uh, the fidelity, the reproducibility, and the accuracy of the model 
But in the end, the predominant limiting factor that we experience is still the optics inside the system itself. We have a few minutes left. And more questions. Can we use this for measuring samples under cell-free system use for protein synthesis? Of course, you can use it for proteins. You can use it for DNA as well. You can. You can. I have done the measurements with the uh, 20 nanometers, 40 nanometers. It works. Uh, it works pretty well. Of course, we, as which said, like it depends on the optics. Better optics, you have better results. Like when you go very down in the size, but uh, of course, it works. Great. Next question: Is it validated for collo colloidal gold too? No. So our, our validation report is uh, done on the standard that is uh, comparable to a DLS. Uh, so this is the golden standard for calibrating size distribution mm -hmm. equipment, and that is on uh, polystyrene beads. So that is the only external validation we have uh, so, so far. Thank you. Next question. Do we have a gating sort of function so that we can exclude out of the range particles? Uh, no. 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 But but what we do have is that we have an uh, online uh, API to uh, to the platform. So what you can do is you can actually take the raw spectrum, all the data, pass it to your own algorithm, and then you can do a gating and separation, and then you can reroute it back into the uh, model and have it plot. So so we uh, fully enable the users to do custom build models and, and modifications for their data flow. Yeah, and then you can also download Excel file as well, yeah. which you can use almost for everything. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Uh, next question. What is the resolution needed for UVBIS? Okay, sorry, the resolution needed for UVBIS. Um, so um, I'm not sure I fully understand that question, mm -hmm. but most uh, UVBIS instruments um, we can go back to the VWR lineup mm -hmm. here. So what, what you see here is that uh, normally most of the UVVIS instruments are optimized to have an accuracy on their wavelength. And what we track is um, shifts in peaks in the wavelength. So that means the resolution that we experience is what is listed here. So for the V1200, we have a resolution or accuracy on the wavelength of two nanometers, whereas for the 6300 PC, the one I'm standing in front of me uh, right now here, uh, we have uh, 0.3 nanometers. Yeah. So, so this is the, uh, the resolution you see in the data set and therefore also translated into the model we have. Um, but this comes from the equipment itself. It's not something that we, uh, uh, we decide. Nice. Yes. And I think we'll take the last question yeah. and then we don't have much. And can the system be added to UV spectrophemies from different manufacturers? Yeah. Yes. So uh, where we are standing right now, we have a broad selection of different uh, instruments and we have tested it uh, in different laboratories uh, on different instruments. Uh, the, the key elements are, of course, that it fits with us, uh, the industry format of a cuvette and that you have uh, a specified wavelength required to conduct the measurements. And all of these data points are on our website, so you can read to see compatibility. Great. Thank you. I think we need to thank you very much for all the great questions. We will uh, continue now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you all because uh, we had so many presentation was it is very clear, and uh, we have um, we had many questions. J just before uh, ending uh, this session, I want to give you some additional information. Um, as I said before, um, you are receiving the link of the recording via email. But uh, for your information, if you go on uh, our website, there is a dedicated area. Uh, you can check under events 
and then checking for uh, webinar succession. And here you can find this webinar recorded. You just you can only um, just add the, uh, register your name and uh, you can listen to it. But also you can see all the coming soon webinars and all the webinars we did in the past uh, divided per uh, per um, application. So uh, if you are not aware, please uh, go and visit this page. Uh, another important information that uh, you, you will receive a certificate of attend attendance uh, 24 hours after the section. And uh, uh, because we, we, in your opinion, is important for us, uh, you are also receiving a survey. Uh, please uh, answer the survey because uh, we need uh, to know uh, your opinion and uh, uh, what do you think about uh, our activities. And uh, as mentioned before, please write to webinar at avantofsciences.com if you have any, any additional question regarding this webinar. And uh, we can forward to Sangeeta or <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again, and uh, I wish you a great day and talk to you soon. Of course, we will have Thank other you. webinars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.